Gamers are sick and tired of narratives being shoved into titles, companies nickel and diming us, and releasing incomplete products. And now we're finding out that Korean devs are reporting a major burst of interest in games from their region, but also single player console and PC games. I have a few different things to show off, but before I get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, I've had to talk a lot more recently about Korean developers doing what Western devs aren't. Western gaming companies are extremely focused on investor dollars and in the process of trying to update their games for modernity or creating politically correct content, they're pushing customers away. And for years, a lot of people went to Japanese developers who unfortunately are now looking at ESG dollars and initiatives going, hmm, this seems like a good way to make a few bucks, even though they're pushing away customers they already had. But Korean devs are actually who a lot of people have been turned Turning to Korean devs have been fighting against the swelling tide of ESG and standing their ground, and now we're seeing this report talking about games coming out of the region and also what players want. This is a GameDeveloper.com article. It says the traditionally online and free-to-play based game industry of South Korean game development may be shifting gears. According to a recent report from uh, Wesley LeBlanc in the final issue of Game Informer, developers at multiple studios like Round 8 Studio, Shift Up, and Pearl Abyss are seeing signs that players at home and abroad are attracted to single-player experiences on PC and console. It's hilarious because because over the years, we have seen the mainstream try to shift away from this. Say, oh, people are not looking at single-player games anymore. They're failing. Oh, well, we want to go in a different direction like multiplayer. And, of course, that got us into titles like live service games that many, many people hate. But it seems that Korean devs are actually following trends, actually listening to what customers want because they're now realizing that players at home and abroad are attracted to single-player, high-quality, complete experiences, which shouldn't be that much to ask, but it really is because so many companies are not focused on listening to what gamers want and actually trying to make products that are going to sell to as many people as possible. They're simply going, how do we think we can make money, not following a reliable strategy. It says LeBlanc reached out to the developers after seeing these companies releasing single-player games like Round 8 Studios' Lies of P, Shift Up Stellar Blade, published by Sony, and Pearl Abyss's upcoming Crimson Desert. These are some amazing games here. Uh, I really loved Lies of P. I thought it was fantastic. I did really enjoy Stellar Blade, but unfortunately, Stellar Blade did still have quite a bit of controversy, primarily because of Sony, because they ended up censoring certain elements of the game at Sony's behest. And while Crimson Desert has not released yet, they had come out of course, a decade ago with Black Desert Online, which Crimson Desert is set in the same universe. And Black Desert Online was a fantastic game. It still, to this day, has the best character customization system I have ever seen. And yes, it does have pay-for-convenience and pay-to-win mechanics, but the gameplay itself is really fantastic. And that's why I'm hoping Crimson Desert is really going to be an awesome experience because it's single-player, it's one-time purchase, it's not going to have microtransactions, and it seems that Pearl Abyss really has listened to our feedback. It says, but why are all of these companies making the jump? There wasn't one clear answer, but instead a constellation of factors that seem to be driving the shift, and it all comes down to players. People are hungry for fresh experiences, people are hungry for high-quality experiences, and I totally and completely agree. I am someone who is willing to take a risk when it comes to the price of a game paying a full price if it means that it is going to be a higher quality experience because there are so many free-to-play games out there that have a lot of potential that are monetized so poorly I just cannot get into them and I know a lot of people feel the same way but when we're looking at Korean devs it's fantastic to see them have a burst of interest because of the 
great content they've been creating, and this article does not mention it, but a big factor, in my opinion, is a lot of people shifting away from the Western games industry and the narratives that are being shoved into content, the activists who are part of the mainstream, and people are looking to support our alternatives that are still really good, and Korean devs are just who people have turned to. It used to be Japanese, and of course there are still a lot of great Japanese companies out there, but many of them have fallen because they do want big investor dollars. And yes, at the end of the day, they are a company that needs to make money, but if they push away the gamers that they once had interested in their products, well, then they're just going to go under and they're not going to exist anymore. But we haven't seen that happen too often with Korean devs. There are a lot of, you know, predatorily monetized Korean video games, just like there are Western and Japanese. I'm not saying that Korean devs are all perfect, but the ones that are coming out with full price full experiences at launch have been pretty freaking good they do have a solid track record like lies of p which was amazing stellar blade was really good except for the censorship that was forced on them at the behest of sony from what we understand and the upcoming games like crimson desert i do think are going to be really big releases and while this does not directly correlate to the conversation of Korean developers seeing a boom in sales currently, it is interesting to see the direction that they're heading in, specifically this that was just announced. After Microsoft shut it down, the Hi-Fi Rush developer Tango Gameworks was revived by the South Korean publisher Krafton, and Krafton probably saw the fact that there were millions of people who were upset that Tango Gameworks was shut down and Hi-Fi Rush would be no longer, so they were listening to players and they decided to take a risk. And this is something Western developers do not do anymore. They don't take risks. They follow the mainstream and what their competition is doing. If one big company does open world, the rest do open world. If one does loot boxes, the rest do loot boxes. But you actively see South Korean publishers and developers going against against what the Western mainstream is doing, and they're taking chances and listening to people. Hi-Fi Rush was an absolutely fan-freaking-tastic game that deserved a lot more recognition and deserved Microsoft following up on it. It deserved a sequel, but then, you know, they decided to, of course, um, you know, shut down Tango, but now we have Krafton acquiring the studio, planning to continue the Hi-Fi Rush IP, and I hope that this turns out well. Honestly, I want Japanese and Western devs to do better, but they're not currently, so that means we have to look to alternatives in Korean content right now, from, from Korean devs, from Korean filmmakers and writers and producers, this is where it's at right now. I highly recommend checking out a lot of the games that are on this list, and hopefully going forward, we continue to see this massive boom and this burst of interest in single-player console and PC games be fulfilled by these companies because there is a major gap right now when it comes to content being created that doesn't have narratives shoved into it, that is isn't predatorily monetized and that are, you know, uh, going to hopefully be full, complete experiences. And it seems that Korean devs are really hoping to capitalize on all of this you know, recently acquired attention. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I'll talk to you all again in the next video really soon.